Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you to Casey Security for your sponsorship. We have some good eats with yes. us today, Chris. From Trucks Roadhouse. Trucks this Roadhouse. This is the uh, mm -hmm. steak salad, mm -hmm. and which we, they sent over for everybody at the office. So we'd like to thank Trucks Roadhouse yeah, very sure. much for that. We're going to close it to keep it warm, though. Yes, but now they, we're going to keep it warm. They fed so, the entire uh, staff yeah. today, so we just wanted to thank you. Yes, and thank you very much. Chris and uh, I got hooked up for breakfast. Oh, oh yeah, we also got a breakfast hook up today we did. too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell them yes. about it. Okay, so I went over to McDonald's, uh, which one of us usually does every morning, and I was in line. There's the two the two drive through mm -hmm. order parts, and then you yeah. go back into one. Mm -hmm. And I ordered at the one. I move forward, and then the lady next to me moves up, and she puts her window down, and she says, "Are you Chris Oldcorn?" And I said, "The one yes, and only lady." I am. <laughs> and I was about to put my window up. I was expecting her to throw eggs or something. <laughs> I thought maybe she worked for the city or the hospital or pretty or, much anybody in yeah, the town that works for <laughs> some sort of governmental organization. Or public health. And she goes, are you buying breakfast for you and Colette? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. Mm -hmm. And she said, let me go first. I'm paying for it. So thank you very much to the random act of kindness. Wasn't that so nice? And she loves the show. She watches every morning at 8. So well, she, thank uh, you. Yes, thank you very much that to the so random awesome. person who was very kind And I'm still drinking the coffee. So. And we still have the coffees going. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. That was so, so awesome. I appreciate yes. it. We have some um, some news today, and we're going to get mm -hmm. to the weather as well. We, um, we're we melting today in here. Right? Yeah, it's also melting outside, too. <sighs> it is hot. Which I'll get to in a bit. But. but first of all, let's talk about Ontario extending the emergency orders for COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. It's until June the 9th. Mm -hmm. So right now, we know that we can't have more than five people. That's still in place. We know that we can't go to playgrounds and we can't not use public pools, which I'm not really a fan of anyway, so I'm good with that. And uh, you know, our social distancing, which I think will be in effect for much longer than Oh, any... I think social distancing will be around for, for quite some time. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So that um, the orders were last extended on May the 12th which pushes to June 2nd mm -hmm. now they are pushed again until June the 9th so we will have to wait and see what happens there yeah. um, COVID-19 rent aid for businesses landlords to cost it, that is okay let's start that again the program offers forgivable loans okay Correct. for um, for half monthly rents in April May and June mm -hmm. um, but that is costing us, Parliament's business watchdog thinks it's costing us 521 520 million dollars this fiscal year so just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention now. Um, it sounds like a big number, but in government terms, that's like pocket change. Yeah. Like when you actually God, look I wish at the, that was my pocket change. The size of how much we actually spend. Mm -hmm. You know, 520 million sounds like a lot to the average person. I'm sure we'd all love to have that in our bank accounts, but <laughs> yeah. for the government, I'll take that, five million yeah. in my bank account. <laughs> for for the government, that's just simply a rounding error. Yeah. So <laughs> it sounds like a big number, and all the stuff adding up does equal a big number at the end. Yeah. However. Uh, our economy will probably be one of the stronger ones in the world coming out yes, of this uh, because true. our government did in, inject so much money into the economy. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're just saying that property owners with up to 10 eligible tenants are able to apply Monday and Tuesday, Everybody, mm -hmm. well, earlier this week, and everybody else can apply for, for the, the rest of the week. Okay, what about relaxing by regions? What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so as we know, Toronto and the five regions mm -hmm. around it, Peel, Halton, um, Durham, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to use York. my Southern Ontario uh, sense here. What's the other one? Um, just York, okay? They have the most cases. Uh, by far. They I, are by far about 65% okay. of all the cases of COVID-19 in right. Ontario. So, sorry, I dropped my pack. I was trying to do that in, 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 <laughs> inconspicuously, but that did not work out. Um, so, yeah. So, what about relaxing measures by region? I asked Ross Romano that. Yeah. How, what did he, he say? flatly said they're not even talking about it. Really? Okay. Yeah, I had a meeting with him uh, last Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a conference call, and it was uh, me and other local media. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, I asked him, are we considering opening regionally? One of the reasons I asked him is that there was an Angus Reid poll that came out last That's week. That's right, we did discuss that. Talking yeah. about how, the like, of the three different groups, either open regionally, open provincially, or just open all of Canada, opening regionally was almost half the people. I think it was 47% of Canadians would like yeah. to see yeah, provinces yeah, right. open regionally based on how many cases there are in each region. So, for example, Quebec has been opening regionally because they've been keeping Montreal basically closed and everything else opening back yeah, up. Yeah, although they are starting to open Montreal restaurants, by the way. I saw that today. So, 
Don't know how long yeah. that is. We'll see what happens there. Yeah, um, but it says more than 70, sorry to yeah. cut you off, more than 76% of province's new infections are in the GTA. Yes. That is, yes. Uh, that's, that's the majority by mm -hmm. far. By far. So why not relax measures re by region? However, you know, maybe they know something we don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> Which takes us to yesterday's conversation about what the yeah, government's the hiding The concern from you, right? is, is people moving from one region to another. How mm -hmm. do you stop that? So for example, like Half let's say point. you're in Toronto okay. and you want to go out to dinner. And then you just drive up to Barry, have dinner, and then drive back to Toronto. Mm -hmm. So oh, there, okay. there are a lot of issues with regards to moving people from region okay. to region. How do you control it? I guess you nobody's going to going to drive from uh, Sault Ste. Marie to Toronto for you know a dinner though. Too. I no. mean, I'm just saying. I get your no, point I mean, about those cities a that line, are in right? close like, proximity. Yeah, because on one side of the line everything's closed. The other side of that line everything's open. Okay, I get that. Right. I so you that. don't even have to drive too far, and then all of a sudden you're in a restaurant that's open that's 20 minutes from your house. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So organized crime and COVID-19. First of all, the definition of organized crime by the RCMP, RCMP is anyone with a group of three or more people involved. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to put that out there before we get any. So was that backlash. family of three that did the protest about the closing down? <laughs> are they considered crime? organized crime with their Maybe. posters and I don't stuff? Know. I'm not no? I, I refuse to comment. Okay. I'm going to hold back comment on that. Okay, so organized criminal groups are adapting their illegal operations to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the beginning of March, Chris, more than 1,000 COVID-19 related crimes have been reported to the RCMP's Canadian Anti-Fraud uh, Centre. Um, they're saying the organized crimes are believed to be behind the majority of schemes being pulled now, taking your wow. money, taking your personal information, um, you know, whatever, you're getting your emails, maybe you're clicking on something, you're believing it. So this hmm. is not just people within our country. This is people who have joined forces or al al allies um, with other organizations or with other countries, you know, people with yeah. other countries. Whether it be online, it's probably more online than anything, I would imagine. And phone calls coming from other countries, because it's, it's hard to stop that. For sure. Yeah. And just watch out for the senior citizens in your life too, because mm -hmm. they're most vulnerable, they want to help out, they might be still at home, they receive a phone call, they could be taken advantage of. So we wanted to spread that oh so good news with everybody yeah. today. So yeah, that's the definition of the RCMP's organized crime. Now yeah. define to me what is going on with this weather, because I'm so oh. hot. Okay. Uh, we got a new high now for today. It is 33 <laughs> Celsius without the Humidex. Sweet. Okay. We are, with the Humidex, we are looking at like 37, 38, which is smoking hot. Mm -hmm. um, and tomorrow, it's going to go back down. Uh, so tomorrow, it's going down to 22, which after today is going to seem like winter. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be a thunderstorm, most likely. And then Friday, we're going down to 14 with a possible low of 5. Mm -hmm. Possible what? low okay, of five. Come off it. So it's going to be uh, partly sunny on Friday. Mm -hmm. As you can see, that is a whole lot of storm coming our it direction totally there. It totally is. So I'm guessing tomorrow we're definitely going to be getting a thunderstorm mm -hmm. starting later tonight and into tomorrow. Okay, so. unless it takes a hard turn somewhere along the way. Eh? Yeah, or <laughs> gets hit by a nuclear bomb or Let's something. Let's hope it does. Well, we've got more news. We've got some local news coming up in the next segment. We've got some global news coming up in the last segment. You've got some great interviews and some mm -hmm. COVID-19 updates and other awesome information that we need. Sure, Hospital and Algoma Health coming up. Well, look at you go. But we have a commercial first to hit and we'll be right back after this message. What's life without making a few mistakes down the road? A few sharp turns and doing things for what we adore but might regret later. A trip to Chuck's Roadhouse isn't one of them. With melt-in-your-mouth AAA steaks, buttery lobster tail, half-priced apps after 9 p.m., an ice-cold draft with all your Roadhouse favorites. Chuck's Roadhouse. Food the way it ought to be. Priced the way it used to be.
message from the Government of Canada. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy or both automatically. No hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place at the right time in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. Welcome back on our Hump Day afternoon special report show. We will yes. have the premier coming up at 1:45. He's, yes, he's, 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 he's yeah. a little bit behind today. I don't know, let me they were at 1:30. Now they're at 145. Maybe they had a lunch so. brought in too. Maybe they're. Just yeah. <laughs> Thank you to Casey Security for your sponsorship, your support, and just your awesomeness. Chris, what's going on in the land of Facebook over there? Yes. Anything? Uh, hello to Erica, who's watching us on Facebook Live hey, right Erica. now. Hello, Thanks. Erica. Thanks for having, watching. Yes, and now. What else do we, we have? got some numbers now for Algoma oh, and Ontario. Okay. okay. Right. So first off, in Algoma, uh, we have one more case that's resolved. So we're mm -hmm. uh, the 21 positive cases, 17 are now resolved or negative. Uh, and we are waiting for just over 400 tests. Um, the, the province has been down in testing over the last five or so days, uh, not anywhere near the 20,000 tests we can do. And our number of tests we're waiting for has actually been going up and it's now at uh, 406, which is up from only about 370 a day before. So also, uh, Ontario numbers have also just come in two days in a row now. We have been with a two in front for the new cases. Yesterday was 287, today it's 292 for new cases. And we had 34, sorry, 32 people today, uh, or sorry, yesterday pass away from COVID-19 in the province of Ontario. So now, uh, speaking of hospitals, uh, this is another part of my interview with Dr. Silvana Spadofora, who is the Chief of Staff at the Sioux, Sioux Area Hospital. And we'll run that for you now. Can you give our audience uh, an idea of what does a public health inspector do kind of like before COVID-19 happened? What was your, your sort of day-to-day -day prior to the pandemic starting? So our role of uh, public health inspector is actually pretty di diverse. We are in uh, pretty much any establishment that provides food, water, or services that are considered non-medical. Uh, we're also involved with a uh, small drinking water system. So we're at our campgrounds or motels, making sure that the water that's provided is safe. Uh, we deal with uh, dog bite complaints. We deal with housing complaints, test the beaches in the summertime. We also are involved with uh, construction aspect and making sure our septic systems in our non-municipal service areas are working properly. Um, we deal with infectious diseases. Uh, we assist our institutions, our long-term care homes, hospitals, and daycare settings, making sure that things are safe for the populations that are served. Uh, we are pretty much all over the place as public health inspectors. And that was Dr. Silvana Spadafora. She's the Chief of Staff at Surya Hospital. If you'd like to see that full interview, you can see it tonight at 7 p.m. You can also see it tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. It'll also be on Facebook Live at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning as well. So let's look at City Council from the other night. I've talked a little bit about the economic recovery, and they have uh, picked three primary focus areas, which is going to be technology, education, and tourism, because those are some of the biggest businesses that we have in this area to help with our economic recovery. Uh, so in technology, they're going to be looking at smart energy grids, advanced manufacturing, and digital transformation for companies. In education, they're also going to be looking at the same thing in terms of advanced manufacturing, information communications technology. They're also going to be investing in looking at health programs and health research locally, and also environmental sciences. Uh, and for tourism, they're looking at different ways of developing products uh, that will hopefully draw people back here, but also people to do what is now being called in travel, which means that you are staying in at your house and traveling and doing just day trips, as oh. opposed to uh, going away somewhere for seven <laughs> weeks somewhere, you do stuff near where you live. And so they're going to be looking at ways to change our tourism where we're going to be focused on, hey, maybe instead of going to Ottawa for your vacation this year, you'll stay in the Sioux and here's five different things you can do in the Sioux area. I like that. So. Yeah. I like that. You know, putting your so, money back into your own community. It keeps it in the local economy, too. And that also helps, obviously, spur local jobs because the money's yeah, sure not does. leaving the community. 
We live in a beautiful city and with all these beautiful areas. And look at how people come here, yeah. winter and summer. I mean, a lot of people move here for the lifestyle. Yeah, you know, I, I did for yeah. one. Yeah. Me too, me too, my friend. Good job, I love it. Okay, so we just received this um, press media release from Algoma Steel. So I apologize mm -hmm. that I'm going to have to be looking down a little bit. But back on April the 6th, uh, Algoma Steel filed a complaint alleging <clears throat> against um, anti-dumping investigation against heavy steel plates. So we finally, they've heard back from today, and I'm just going to read this right off here so I don't mix mm -hmm. it up, okay? Uh, they welcome the Canada Border Services Agency decision today to initiate an anti-dumping investigation concerning hot rolled heavy steel plate exported from China, or Chinese Taipei, Germany, South Korea, Malaysia, and Turkey. So these five countries covered by today's announcement have sold large volumes of heavy plate into Canada at very low prices. Um, <clears throat> but from what I understand, it's it's provided some injuries to some Canadian workers. Is the steel not up to par? I'm not too sure what it's... I know um, the Chinese steel is not considered as good as Canadian steel in general. Okay, so it just says... There's it's been problems in construction in the past. Well, maybe see. that's what it is, and that's why there's some injuries. So it's a critical first step towards protecting the Canadian market from unfairly traded steel plate from these mm -hmm. countries. If CBSA, which is the Border Security Agency, makes preliminary determination of dumping provisional anti-dumping duties will be enforced as of August 25th. So they're, they're planning on moving this on this very quickly, which is great. Um, the Canadian International Trade Tribunal finds that these imports have injured domestic producers. Mm -hmm. Anti-dumping duties will be enforced as of December 2020. So uh, this was a release made from the CEO, um, Michael McQuaid himself. Uh, we do have it online at sueonline.com. I encourage you to go and read more upon that. But I wanted to share that with you as that is a very important story in our great city yes. of Sault Ste. Marie. Also in the city, we had another press release today from the city themselves. They have a new initiative nominating the COVID-19 heroes. So Heroes of the Day will be published on the city's website and shared on all the, the, the uh, social media platforms, the Instagrams of the world and the Facebooks and the Twitters. On the interwebs. On the interwebs. On the interwebs. And they're, <laughs> they're planning on doing this daily, so Monday to Friday, depending on how many they receive, right? So. Yeah. You know, just uh, send that off to the city clerk. Who's so this is you submit it? Yes, and you then submit it via someone? email, city clerk at uh, city clerk at cityssm.on.ca. Send them a picture, the backstory, whatever information you can. They're going to choose that hero, and hopefully they get a bunch so that they will mm -hmm. have a lot of information to do. And like I said, so um, we are doing inviting the submission of nomination for the COVID-19 hero. So, you know, if you know, should I nominate you? Sure, why not? <laughs> I could nominate Chris. Well, I get I another could nominate breakfast Chris. out of it or something? <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting Lunch, you any breakfast. You know? I'll get you a coffee maybe. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> but we have more coming up. Like I said, we've got some more news about the uh, NASA. Mm -hmm. And that's yes. the big news. We did originally say it was going to launch at 12 o'clock. It is 4.30. Um, but we'll talk about that when we come back. You have some more updates. Um, yes. Six ways to support some small businesses. So mm -hmm. that's important. So we're going to cut to a commercial right now and be back with more information. See you in a minute. Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. 
The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades, including installation, are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. And welcome back. For those of you paying attention, you probably <laughs> were able to deduce, and you probably pretty easily, that the, the video that we just saw was not Dr. Silvana Spadaforo. Uh, it was actually Gary Leith from Algoma Public Health, who is a guy. And so you saw that clip first, and okay. I apologize for that. That interview will actually start tomorrow night uh, on my show at 7 p.m. We'll also have a little bit more of it tomorrow as well. However, we are now actually going to show you some of the Dr. Silvana Spada for interview, who is the Chief of Staff at the Syria <laughs> Hospital, and you can see the full interview tonight at 7 p.m. And we hear the term reopening a lot. Can you explain to our audience what the reopening of the hospital actually means? So if we were lucky here at our site that uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, activity within the hospital walls. We did have patients present uh, to, to the hospital, but they didn't have to stay overnight. Um, so we did have to realign and um, relearn our protocols for the first little bit. So we mm -hmm. did see some decrease in some of our activities. Um, however, a lot of our services are still ongoing. So for example, our dialysis uh, program is ongoing, our radiation oncology program is ongoing, our medical oncology program, uh, some of our, our day services, so some of our endoscopies, etc., our CAT scans, MRIs, and even our, some of our surgeries. The elective procedures are the ones that have been slowed down. And when the minister talks about um, reopening that, specifically what it is that they're talking about is reopening our non-essential, our elective uh, procedures. The um, the minister has uh, has put out a checklist that each hospital has to um, uh, fill out, and then there is various tables that we have to present our hospital's plans as to how to open up and what it will take for us to open up. Uh, once the um, the checklist has been the the forms have been filled out uh, and the checklist has been uh, adhered to, then it's submitted to our regional table and it's signed off by our regional um, co-directors as well as our uh, public health um, officer, and then it's submitted to the minister, and then we get the go-ahead to go ahead. Uh, none of us has received that final say-so as yet, and not all the hospitals within the Northeast or the Northwest uh, have been able to complete that. Job. And that was Dr. Silvana Spadafora, Chief of Staff at the Surrey Hospital. You can see that full interview tonight at 7 p.m. and again at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. And also, talking about small businesses, as we were talking before about the economic recovery locally, yeah. here's a way you can help a small local business. You can write a positive review for them. You can tell your friends and family. You could follow them on social media. You can engage with their posts. You can give them a shout out and you can sign up for their newsletter. Awesome. And back to Canada Post, uh, yeah, my, uh, my this little saga one. of my shorts. Uh, there was a guy just a few days ago in Toronto that received a package mm -hmm. eight years late. Oh, that all? So, yeah, so the, the, my shorts could have been delayed more. Uh, so it took eight, eight years for him. And guess what the product was? I already know. Brill cream. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you ordered it back in 1960s, not eight years ago. Squiggly. Anyways, we got to go to commercial break. We will be right back after this short break. Hold tight. I love it.
though we can't always meet in person, we can still listen. Even though schools are closed, help is still available in your community. Even though you may be worried, services and supports are still here. In stressful times like these, families need mental health supports more than ever. We are here to make sure you can stay connected to your community and culture. Nous savons qu'il peut être difficile de rester à la maison, mais vous n'êtes pas seul. And we know asking for help for yourself and others can be hard. But there are people in your community who are ready to support you. No matter your age, gender, sexual identity, race, or culture. No matter the day, time, or issue. We're here to help. back. Thank you, Casey Security, for keeping us safe and sponsoring the show. Chris, we've got the NHL back. Sort of. Not sort of, kind of, maybe. Not this country because yeah. of our 14-day quarantine um, um, rules. Act, uh, rules. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, We cannot have any games played in Canada. We need to go to the States. Yes. So that's fine. We haven't. They haven't determined the locations as of yet. I do know that Toronto is playing the um, the Blue Jack or Columbus, so that's great. Um, I'm just happy that we are not playing the Boston Bruins. And there's my lovely team right there. Go Leafs, go! Oh, the go Columbus Leafs, go. Blue Jackets. So Mike wanted to put up. <laughs> Mike wanted to put up a picture of the the Canadians on the break. I said, "Don't you dare! Don't you dare do it!" Anyways, Ottawa is lucky to even be in it. But all Canadian teams are pushed on. I think Mike now. could redeem himself after playing the wrong video if he put up a picture of the Montreal Ooh, Canadiens. Oh snap! Somebody got their pen there. Okay, uh, I was waiting for Chris to call him out. I mean, you, you handled it so <laughs> gracefully uh, earlier, but no, we just had to hang him out. So, anyways, yes. Yeah, so NHL is coming back. Um, they're going to mm -hmm. do a couple round robins. We're going to go from there. Let's hope the Leafs make it past round one, which I think they will. So anyways, that's another. Definitely be a different, interesting way to end the season. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But as you know, the arenas will be empty. Mm -hmm. um, we, <laughs> we were talking. TV only. Yes. But, you know, that's that's going to be a while, I think. Anyways, yes. So that's the update on the chill. I'm very happy about it. Um, on to the Amazing Race Canada. Last night they had the awards. Um, the Entertainment Awards or Canadian Screen Awards. Thank yep. you, the Screen Awards. And, and under Entertainment, the Amazing Race Canada won uh, big for the Canadian Screen Awards. They, <clears throat> the, per the perennial hit travel contest, which airs on CTV, we should add that, captured six trophies, including Best Reality Competition Program or Series. The mm -hmm. awards were for uh, Season 7, which is won by Indigenous Two Spirit couple Anthony Johnson and mm -hmm. James Makokis. So congratulations to them. Wow. I would love to do Amazing Race, but uh, you would have to be, your partner would have to be stellar. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. you couldn't be doing it half-ass. You have yeah. to really pick a good partner to go with who would not annoy, oh my God, I don't think I could pick anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my son, Connor. But you would get to see great parts of Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be amazing, right? And yeah. I do think someone said that it did come through Sault Ste. Marie uh, mm. the last time they did, well, not the last time, yeah. one of the times I did the Canadian... Um, uh, amazing Grace. They were talking about doing one locally here in September um, where they would have raise money for a, a foundation or a, some charity mm -hmm. and just have two people running throughout the Sioux and then have, I don't know who was going to organize that, but I'm pretty sure that's probably yeah, on the outs right now. Yeah, on hold right now. Unfortunately so. Um, okay, so NASA. Today we have some pictures to share with you. Um, so that, again, we did say that that was going to be this after the, today at 12 o'clock, but no, we were wrong. It's at 4.30. It hasn't happened in nearly a decade, and it hasn't happened on Ameri American soil on top of that. This is the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket is planned to launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida today at 4.33 p.m. Eastern Time. The first manned rocket launched from the U.S. in nearly a decade. After record rainfall, though, Chris, they were scared that it wouldn't happen, but... Um, there's now a 60% chance of favorable conditions for the green light to go. So we should see that launch at 4.30 this afternoon. And uh, they've, it's part of Elon Musk's... Yeah, uh, SpaceX is owned by Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah so he part has... Part of his stuff he's done Yeah, super cool. PayPal. Awesome, yeah, smart guy. Um, so. And he has, uh, they have new suits, new outfits yeah. as, as well. So look for that. And we will see you at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. tonight. 5 p.m. evening news, 7 p.m. my show. Good afternoon.